Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I wanted to discuss the uh, addition of 3D cladding materials into the material library that I've recently done. So this has been, oh, probably a couple of months or two, three months now of work, um, kind of uh, just kind of one by one we've I've added these uh, 3D materials. So let's just quickly go over the four that are available to us at this point. We have the board and batten, which is uh, this uh, one here. We have the shiplap, which looks like this. And again, these profiles, of course, can be altered and adjusted, so I'm going to get into that, but just have some default uh, configurations here. Here's our log cladding. And here's the latest one, which is just the uh, regular uh, lap siding or lap cladding. So. <coughs> You can actually create all of these custom 3D materials within the material library. So let me take a look here and show that to you. And if we kind of open this up a little more. So as you can see, you've got battens, shiplap, logs, and lap. So there's four of them now. And you'll notice behind each one of these uh, keywords is a string of numbers with underscores and that essentially is how we define the materials and um, determine what dimensions that they that they have like spacings and sizing so with battens um, you will notice that you have three numbers um, and with shiplap you have two numbers logs you also have three numbers and lap siding you only have one number um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna go back to the um, the main window here just put that aside for a second. I'm going to go ahead and turn on some dimensions that I already pre-put on some of these uh, <coughs> configurations. So let's quickly just go over what each of these numbers mean. So if we kind of zoom in here, we can see that um, in the in the bat board and batten uh, siding. Well, first of all, what you're going to notice is that the actual thickness of the siding itself is determined by the cladding thickness, of course, which is in this case a quarter inch so that um, you know you just change by the regular adjusting your uh, well, let's see here let's go ahead and let's uh, let's demonstrate that I guess so if we go here under cladding we'll see that's that let's change that to say um, 0.375 which is 3 eighths of an inch and if we update that you'll notice that it now just got thicker right so you can adjust your uh, overall thickness but what happens is is these other three numbers will determine uh, the shape and size of the actual boards and the, on the battens so let's go back here and bring this back in so board and battens again we have 12 1.5 and 0.75 in this case so 12 the first number of course is our spacing so that's the spacing center to center between the boards and then your um, 1.5 that will be the width of the boards so you can see you've got a width and then the third number is the 0.75 and that will give you the depth of these boards right so again let me just throw that in there we can see that and so once you know once you have created this wall you're using this particular material that you've already predefined um, you really can't you know change the material on the wall you have to change the materials configuration here and once you once you actually do that you know you actually rename that material so then you'll have to reassign the new rename material uh, on the wall itself if, if you decide to do that so I what I suggest actually the best thing to do is just go ahead and pre-configure you know your different board and batten or shiplap or whatever you know, materials uh, sidings you that you want to use and then have those just pre-configured and then you know you can easily swap between them as as you're going ahead and doing your design so let's go ahead now and look at the shiplap siding so again this one is basically two parameters or two numbers associated with it so you have shiplap then you have underscore then you have this number and then you have that number so the first number of course is the center to center spacing of the board or the laps and then the 
second number, which is in this case 0.75, is the width of this uh, little opening here, or I don't know what you want to call that, I guess the groove between the boards. Um, so really it's just two numbers and you can, like I said, you can define those however you want. You know, you could have like a 12 foot board with a half inch space between them. Um, with this particular siding though, um, what you'll notice is that this depth of the siding is controlled by the cladding depth which in this case I've set to a half inch and then the depth of the cut is set by default to half of that depth so it's always going to be half of the depth of the cladding itself so let's let's just adjust this here and, and see what we get so if we take and change this um, wall cladding thickness let's say to I don't know 0 0.075 three quarters of an inch maybe and you're going to notice that it's going to get quite a bit thicker and you'll also notice that the depth of the cut is still one half of the depth of the, of the thickness of the cladding. So that's kind of how that's controlled. Um, there's not a way to control that as a user. It's just basically one half. All right, so let's go now and look at the log siding. Okay, so log siding, similar sort of thing again. A um, little, more, little more complicated because we've got more geometry going on. As you'll notice with log siding, it's logs <coughs> underscore 8.0 uh, underscore 0 0.625 underscore 1. So essentially we have three parameters that we're specifying here. So the first one is the 8 inches, and of course that will be the center to center spacing of the logs. And you can see that 8 inches there. And then you've got the uh, 0.625 which in this case is the spacing, or the, not the spacing, sorry, the width of the groove between the logs, which in this case is 5 eighths of an inch. And then the 1 inch, that will give you the depth of the log. So it's basically from the bottom of this groove to the top of the log, okay? That, so that kind of controls that curvature. So, you know, if you want it bulging out more, you set that third number a little larger. Or if you want a flatter sort of appearance, well then you can set that to lower. So that's how that's controlled. Um, so what what is interesting though is that uh, so let's go ahead and adjust this uh, thickness of this particular cladding here. So let's go edit wall assembly. Let's jump down here and now set the wall cladding thickness. Let's try it a half inch just to, just to see what happens here. Okay, so you'll notice that now instead of being a quarter inch, um, we've basically added a half inch. So this dimension we can control, and of course it lifted everything, you know, off, uh, basically uh, translated it another quarter inch out. So it, you can control that base thickness, I guess, with the wall cladding thickness parameter. You'll notice that this particular dimension here, uh, not that one, I'm just going to delete that one for now, so we can get out of our way, um, this this distance here I'm talking about. Okay, so <clears throat> this is not a controlled distance, this is hard coded in. So this little bit distance will always be an eighth of an inch, and it's just there to kind of provide that little bit of lift off from the, the bottom of the groove and then start the log. So that is not a controllable number at this point. I mean at some point I may change it if we if there is need for that. But so far there isn't. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And this is the latest one. This is the just the basic lap siding. Very simple. Um, again, if we look here, we've only got one parameter for it. So like I said, it's very simple. And that is just the uh, reveal. You know, the center, well not the center center, but the reveal of each one of those laps. So in this case, it's a 7.0, 7 inch, or 7 inch reveal. Um, again, uh, you can control the depth of everything by just go ahead and editing this thickness. And in this case, I think I set a 0.5. Um, let's try one inch just to just to see what really happens there. And you'll notice that now we've got quite a thick, heavy lap. Okay, so again, this is very similar to the other one. Um, the total, uh, 
total depth is going to be one inch. And of course, it doesn't let me find that center point, but you can see that it's it's uh, one inch there. And then um, and then the depth of the cut is going to be half that distance, so it's going to be a half inch from here to here. Okay, so again, that is hard coded in. It's always going to be a half of the total depth of the cladding. So um, yeah, you, is, that is not user con uh, user controllable, but um, I think it works fairly well. So basically, that's uh, it as far as these 3D claddings that are currently available. Like I said, you've got a board and batten, you've got a ship lap, you've got a log cladding, and you've got a lap uh, siding cladding. Um, and as far as editing them and setting them up, fairly easy to do. The key thing to remember is that each, if you want to have it, you know, actually the plugin recognize that as a 3D siding or cladding, you just need to make sure that you use these proper keywords. So it's going to be battens, shiplap, logs, and lap. And then you just need to um, put the underscores and the numbers appropriately behind the keywords. So like if I edit this particular one, you can see that it's, um, you know, it's just a proper string of characters really. And that's about it, really. Um, you can create as many as you like. You can you can change up the colors of them. Uh, you know, you don't have to use any particular color. Uh, so it's I don't know. I think it's fairly simple and straightforward to use. Um, and you know, I may add some more at some point if there is call for more. But at this point, I've only got the four. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's fairly straightforward. Anyways, um, if you have any questions about this or uh, need some assistance, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always available by email, sometimes by phone. Uh, email, of course, is probably my preferred form of communication at this point. So thank you, everyone, and I appreciate your support, and we will talk to you later.